Thanks to organizers for inviting me to this conference. Today I will present the results of the Oplon Italian project with uh, principal investigator Professor Loreto Gesualdo. You can see the list of uh, co-authors and uh, contributors of the studies I will present today. Chronic kidney disease is an important risk factor for cognitive impairment in elderly persons. And uh, the prevalence of the cognitive impairment in these people is uh, from 20 to 50 percent in the disease stages three and four, but it can reach 80 percent in seniors. In the slide, you see the two main hypotheses of the brain dysfunctions in uh, chronic kidney disease. The vascular hypothesis related to uh, disorders of white uh, matter in the brain in relation to uh, microbleeds and vascular injury. Another hypothesis is that the neurodegenerative disorders can uh, contribute to the brain damage in chronic kidney disease in relation to uremic toxins and inflammation. Neuroimaging tools allow us to uh, map the brain dysfunctions and cognitive deficits in uh, chronic kidney disease. Uh, magnetic resonance imaging is able to map the cerebral white matter disorder microvascular disease as small vessel impairment in uh, our patients. And uh, positron to to emission tomography allows us to map the decrease in cerebral blood flow and uh, brain metabolism in chronic kidney disease patients. You can see in the slide uh, an experiment showing that the silver blood flow, as revealed by PET, decreases over time during uh, hemodialysis in chronic disease patients. And you see single subjects results all showing this decrease over time. Another approach to study the brain dysfunctions and cognitive deficits in chronic kidney disease patients is the recording and the spectral analysis of a resting state, eyes closed, EG activity. Is uh, cost effective, is non invasive, and you can repeat these uh, recordings over time, several times, without an any disturbances uh, in uh, the patients. Previous studies have shown that uh, EG rinse in the resting state is abnormal in uh, patients with chronic kidney disease. We have an increase of delta rinse in, uh, and uh, a decrease of alpha rinse in uh, our patients in association with renal deficits. In this slide, you see uh, the, the general procedure to, to estimate the power of uh, different EG rhythms in a delta, alpha, beta, and uh, other frequency bands. You can see that from uh, the original true recording, you can derive the single frequencies, the oscillations, and you can measure the power and the typical power spectra of EG rhythms is represented here. And you can see that in the vertical axis, you have the power of EG and the horizontal axis, the frequencies, and you can represent the power of different frequencies. The aims of our two studies were to test the hypothesis that we have different 
abnormalities in EG rinse uh, in the resting state condition in uh, chronic kidney disease patients with my cognitive impairment as compared to patients with Alzheimer's neurodegenerative disease and my cognitive impairment to test the different impact of uh, neurodegeneration and other causes. And in the second study, we tested the EG source activity in two groups of uh, chronic kidney disease patients, one under conservative therapy and the other the hemodialysis. The basic methodology illustrated in this slide with the EG recordings with the standard 1020 electrode montage system clinical and neuropsychological evaluation, of course, routine analysis uh, uh, of a kidney function. And uh, on the right side of the slide, you can see the uh, pipeline of EG data analysis, the removal of uh, artifactual EG periods, and source estimates with illurata freeware. And you see that we can obtain cortical activities of EG rinse in the red macro regions in the cerebral cortex at different frequencies in delta, theta, alpha, beta, and gamma bands. In the first study, we compared uh, EG cortical activation in Alzheimer's disease with my cognitive impairment, a kidney disease with my cognitive impairment. And you see the features of the people in this the first study with similar age, gender, and education, and uh, with uh, uh, a my cognitive impairment in the two groups of patients, as compared to normal elderly subjects. And uh, in uh, this table, you can see that uh, uh, we have a no significant difference uh, in um, several neuropsychological tests, uh, in attention, memory, executive functions, and some clinical scales between the two groups. Some different functions uh, in cognition can be seen in the two groups uh, with uh, uh, more abnormal uh, results in the short-term memory in Alzheimer's disease patients and in uh, uh, long-term memory in uh, chronic disease MCI people. Here we have the results of the first study. You see in the vertical axis the cortical activation in the sources, and in the horizontal axis the cerebral regions of interest, frontal, central, parietal, occipital, temporal, and limbic or delta rims in the right and alpha rims in, in, in the, uh, the other side. And you, you can see that uh, in blue we have the normal elderly subjects and uh, we have a, a dominant cortical activation in alpha rims in normal subjects, especially in occipital and parietal areas and a dramatic drop of uh, alpha source activity in Alzheimer's disease patients. You see in red the group of Alzheimer's disease and MCI. And a very clear decrease even in patients with chronic kidney disease, but not so uh, important as Alzheimer's disease patients. When you see the delta rims, you see very very low level of delta surge activity in the resting state in normal elderly subjects, and a very important increase, abnormal increase in uh, chronic kidney disease patients. And we have also some abnormal increase in Alzheimer's disease MCI, but not so strong as uh, chronic kidney disease patients. In this slide, we show the rock curve analysis, the classification of individuals in the different groups 
only based on EEG surge activity. And we can see that the occipital alpha and delta could discriminate between individuals in a normal and ultimate group with 0.81 of uh, accuracy, which is about 81% of uh, accuracy. And the parietal delta is able to disentangle individuals, normal and the subjects, and chronic kidney disease, 0.86, about 86% of accuracy. And we were able also to disentangle uh, chronic kidney disease and Alzheimer's disease patients with 0.75 using parietal alpha cortical activation. In the second study, we compared two groups of uh, chronic kidney disease patients, one in uh, under conservative therapy and the other in hemodialysis. And you see that we don't have differences in age, gender, and location, and we have a um, uh, mild cognitive impairment uh, in the two groups of patients. Again, we see that we uh, have only differences in the renal functions between the two groups of patients, but no differences in uh, cognitive neuropsychological tests. When we uh, focus on uh, EEG source activities in delta and alpha rins in the three groups, again we see that the normal elderly subjects show a nice power in the cortical sources of alpha rins in blue. And surprisingly also chronic kidney disease on hemodialysis showed normal alpha cortical sources. In contrast, chronic kidney disease under conservative therapy show a, a dramatic decline of uh, alpha rins. When we observe delta source activity, we show very low level in normal elderly subjects in blue, uh, of a very important abnormal increase in uh, chronic kidney disease under conservative therapy, and an increase but not so big in uh, chronic kidney disease on hemodialysis. So the picture is that the Chronic kidney disease on hemodialysis show a better EEG source activity when compared to chronic kidney disease and MCI. Again, the rock cures were able to disentangle normal and uh, chronic kidney disease under conservative therapy with 0.89 with the delta, central delta, uh, and uh, we were also able to discriminate normal and uh, patients uh, under hemodialysis with zero, 0 0.78 with parietal delta and also the two groups of patients with frontal delta, 0 0.78. So even at individual level, we can disentangle these people. In conclusion, more abnormalities in widespread delta and less posterior alpha source activities were observed in chronic kidney disease MCI when compared to Alzheimer's disease patients. So Alzheimer's neurodegeneration cannot explain the changes in chronic kidney disease patients with MCI. And uh, we, the EG approach was able to disentangle uh, people with chronic kidney disease on conservative therapy against people on hemodialysis. So uh, it's encouraging for future longitudinal studies in these patients before and after hemodialysis. Thanks a lot for your attention.